today as we are aware that we are going to learn the intrusion by shashi deshpande and this is the book that comprises the other stories except the intrusion mm. today we are going to learn about shashi deshpande's the intrusion and in this book of uh, the intrusion and other stories by shashi deshpande you will get the uh, story definitely as well as the other stories beautiful stories written by shashi deshpande what we are going to deal with in this story the story is quite a bigger one and as a student of english literature uh, one must understand that uh, that in a video this is not possible to continue with this full story at a strength now at a length if you want to continue with this story you will miss the flavor of the story so we are going to divide the story into several parts as we will be reading through the story line by line so the complete story will not be completed within selected period of time so we have to divide it in several sections now in the first section we are going to deal with fewer paragraphs of the story and we will try our best not to lose the flavor of the story basically the story is about women and deshpande's other stories too even her novel the long silence is also dealing with the problem of women and the stronger character of women as the title suggests of this little story the intrusion you can understand the meaning of the very word intrusion and this is not a time when i must bring examples for you in the video from which you can get the meaning of a particular or separate word intrusion suggests that penetrating into something or by force or something like that someone has to be the intruder who intrudes intrude means entering into something entering into somewhere that is intruder in an unknown region without permission someone is getting into entering into that is called intrusion so the intrusion may be a symbolic one and after the end of the story you will understand whether it is a symbolic story or something else however from the beginning we need to understand at least the meaning and the moment we will understand the meaning of the title that very moment we will understand also the intention of the writer to bring at least a significance of the title through the depiction of the characters as we are aware of some of the characteristic features of shashi deshpande's writings we have these informations like she upholds the nature of women as a insecure one and there are definitely uh, theories relating to these uh, ideas basically associated with the characteristic representation that deshpande already did in her several sets of short stories and novels this particular story is speaking about a woman and that woman is an insecure woman naturally she is becoming the representation of all those insecure women in the world or at least in india and by doing that deshpande tries to seek our attention basically the attention of male towards the female and she wants us to understand the division between male and female that in the male dominated society we usually do 
so without wasting our time if we get to the story directly we will understand it better and bit by bit we will try to know we will try to understand uh, the meaning of the story now before entering into the story i am making it clear do not expect that all the words should be explained in this video or will be explained in this video some of the meanings of the words several words are the words you will find newer you have to understand by yourselves or getting through the dictionary however to the largest extent we will try our best to make you clear about the lines and the words so the intrusion by shashi deshpande we looked blatantly out of place there the story starts with we and because we as plural suggest a relationship perhaps and maybe a conjugal relationship so we looked blatantly out of place there blatantly means obvious something very obvious something that has to happen that is called blatant so we looked blatantly out of place there so we were not fitting over there tiny houses almost miniature ones but speak and span tiny houses miniature tiny miniature etc are all suggesting the smaller version but speak and span speak and span is a phrase and it means neat and clean and well look looked after so although the houses are tiny miniature smaller but they are clean and neat a little path so narrow that if we stretched our arms we could touch the houses on both sides now this is very um, full of uh, imag imagery so you can imagine uh, the way they were um, going together a little path a very small way a uh, smaller way so narrow it's a narrow way that if we stretched our arms we could touch the houses on both sides so there is a road they were going through uh, perhaps to a uh, destination and the road is very narrow so narrow that they can touch or they could touch the houses on both sides why had we come here now all of a sudden the speaker is asking this question why had we come here just like she is asking we are also asking the same question as a reader that where are they going who are they there are several other questions that are continuously roaming in our head only to know the answer and all of a sudden there is the question of the speaker who is narrating from the beginning why had we come here i walked stiffly self consciously trying hard to seem unaware of the stares the curious eyes that followed us so i walked stiffly stiff suggests that there is no flexibility without any flexibility stiffly self consciously so the speaker is very self conscious aware very much aware of the situation trying hard to seem unaware of the stairs so trying hard to seem unaware of the stair stair means uh, gazing or seeing continuously at a length of time and who are staring the curious eyes that followed us so some people are following them be perhaps they are newer to them perhaps they didn't see them or perhaps they were completely unexpected there so she is probably uh, as we can expect this i uh, maybe shashi deshpande or a female like her if we can guess that if we can assume that i is a female then um, trying hard to seem unaware of the stairs means that she is trying hard that nobody is looking at them the curious eyes that followed them 
she is trying hard to unaware of the stairs that there is no stair at all nobody is looking so ignore them that is a kind of attitude i wished i could turn around and stare back with the same frank curiosity so she's wishing she's expecting then she could turn around and stare back with the same frank curiosity frank curiosity means there is no question or undoubted uh, curiosity uh, mm, a definite curiosity in the eyes there is no shame there is no hiding so that kind of curiosity is called a frank curiosity but all i could do was to peep covertly through the corners of my eyes all i could do was to peep peep peeping means you know looking uh, in a way uh, so some pictures can also make it clear that this is called peep so all i could do was to peep covertly covert means secretly through the corners of my eyes so she she is also trying to look at them uh, in a way that the followers could not understand or followers do not understand mm, it doesn't matter whether it is in past or present uh, just get the interest in the description don't follow the tense men in checked cheek or uh, uh, see that men in checked lungies sitting at fishing nets now lungies actually uh, we understand it's lungies but when it is in pronunciation of the uh, british received pronunciation uh, it is uttered or pronounced as longi so men in checked longis sitting at fishing nets drying fish laid out in rows on poles women with bold faces and gold ornaments now this description suggests something we are gradually getting it clear men in check lounges sitting at fishing nets maybe they are fishermen and that's why they were wearing lounges because this is a bit typical of them and fishing nets so they are uh, going somewhere where there is a sea nearby drying fish laid out in rows and poles as we have already experienced it in, uh, in at mohona at midnapur at digha at some places like that so laid out in rows and poles so women with bold faces and gold ornaments so the women were uh, with their bold faces and gold ornaments that that was a uh, uh, general system a general custom of those women who used to um, wear gold ornaments all the signs of fishing villages so these dots suggest like these that means drying fish laid out Mm, rows and poles or sitting at fishing nets or women with bold faces and gold ornaments these characteristic features these dots suggest characteristic like the earlier and that's why she is saying that all the signs of a fishing village but i thought if this is a fishing village where is the sea so she's thinking if this is a fishing village where is the sea so see here we need to understand that female is here expecting see rather than this people she doesn't want to be disturbed by those people who are staring at them she only wants the see now this is an uh, this is a notion of her Mm, a romantic mind perhaps or a liberating mind that she wants to see the sea and that is why she is asking where is the sea so this is the second question after why had we come here this is the second question she is asking where is the sea and then we reached the end of the lane which lane that little path which is so narrow that is the lane turned right and there suddenly enchantingly was the sea in front of us a very general normal description if we are approaching towards the sargadwar at puri at orissa or midnapur that means at digha if we are walking then when the sea comes in front of us it was all of a sudden and all of a sudden our mind becomes fresh so 
that's why this enchantingly the phrase or the word is used here uh, she was excited uh, it was delightful so, to her and that is why it is enchantingly turned right and there suddenly enchantingly was the sea in front of us immense and fascinating it is huge large immense and fascinating it is excellent it is mm, undescribable that's why it's fascinating without any description that you cannot speak and again rows and rows of fish hung up to dry so there are lots of rows uh, uh, rows of fish hung up to dry mm, that as we have already said about the experience at mohona the, uh, with the fishing village the uh, fishermen tried to do that so hung up to dry looking at us and at the blue of the sky with sightless accusing eyes so these rows and rows of fish hung up to dry looking at us who are looking at them those either those people or she is just personifying those rows and rows of fish hung up to dry she is personifying this looking at us either those people or she is personifying this looking at us or there is third concept looking at us perhaps the sea is looking at them and at the blue of the sky with sightless accusing eyes maybe it is the sea because the sea has the blue of the sky with sightless because you cannot see uh, the end the depth the length accusing eyes as if uh, some in something is accusing something is uh, saying in a uh, problematic tone that there is a problem and that is the accusation so accusing eyes as if the sea is accusing as if uh, the rows and rows of fish hung up to dry they are accusing so if this is not clear from one perspective you can run this throughout um, in in several perspectives in several direction in several modes so the first paragraph what we get to know about this paragraph who are the characters where are they going and we do not have any information about that the only little pieces that we can connect that they are probably going uh, somewhere to their destination and we can also assume that this we uh, the the word the we perhaps suggest a couple a pair probably a husband and wife and probably they are on the on their honeymoon or in a vacation and they are going to their hotel perhaps and they are going through a village a fishing village perhaps and the people were not that happy situated to look at those people like them and that's why they are staring at them the female part probably this i is the female who is looking at them and she is expecting the sea and she is also describing the journey so the journey starts from the beginning to this first paragraph the end of the first paragraph <coughs> where the destination is not clear they are not even at their destination so naturally it is uh, as if a glimpse that is given by the writer to the readers only to understand that something is going to happen very soon and we need to wait for that the second paragraph if we are moving towards it just like the beginning of the journey from the first paragraph it starts i stopped and stared so the narrator stops somewhere and she is also staring looking at he stopped too so the in the first paragraph we have no idea who are this we we can only guess assume that this i is probably a female and if this female is here i stopped and stared he stopped too he is another part of this we and he probably the husband of this i so i stopped and stared he stopped too and looked at me with a slight a very light impatience 
very with aroused the faint uh, which aroused the faintest wisp of annoyance in me looking at her the male counterpart that means the husband slight a very slight impatience so he looked at her with a very slight impatience impatience suggests that the man is not patient probably that all of a sudden or suddenly the female stopped at somewhere and that brought or brings a sudden pause in the journey and that's why maybe uh, the husband is or was slightly impatient so very slight impatience which aroused the faintest wisp of annoyance in me faintest means faint is as if it's fading faintest is a list very very minimum wisp of annoyance wisp actually suggests a small thin or twisted bunch piece or amount of something uh, but uh, there um, i mean here we spoke annoyance means uh, a little bit of annoyance annoyance we understand that as irritation or the feeling or state of being annoyed uh, basically it's irritation so we spoke annoyance a, a little bit of irritation in her so see here this slight activity of the male he stopped to slight impatience which aroused the faintest wisp of annoyance in me now his slight impatience brings faintest wisp of annoyance in her so she is perhaps is not liking the attitude of the husband at that moment so from the beginning there is a liberating kind of sense perhaps a liberation within in the mind of the female and that is the reason why she is getting this wisp of annoyance because of his slight impatience then he beckoned to me with a friendly smile and i hurried on he beckoned to me what is beckoned beckoned suggests that making a gesture with the hand arm or head to encourage or instruct someone to approach or follow so the husband is showing the signs of coming forward to the female to her to his wife and that's why he, then he beckoned to me with a friendly smile so indeed the female, male has a friendly smile and i hurried on so because of his beckoning because of his uh, gesture to come forward uh, she hurried on uh, that means she is made her ways quick or quicker now we were talking uh, we were walking on the sand squelchy oozing almost black we were walking on the sand so uh, up to the lane they are on the now the sand on the sand squelchy oozing almost black so almost black is clear or clear what is squelchy and oozing squelchy suggest that a soft sucking sound uh, perhaps made by um, the mud and here the sound is made by the sand that's the squelchy making a uh, sound soft sucking sound oozing suggests that it is as if dropping uh, that oozing darkness oozing you can find it in the heart of darkness by joseph conrad there is the concept of darkness oozing from the tree so this ooze is as if mm, filtering as if uh, pouring drop by drop that is the oozing so that sand is squelchy oozing almost black almost black means uh, the sand is almost black walking on the sun, sand the sea must have been here not long back during the high tide and why the sound is made like that because the sea must have been here not long back so uh, very uh, few moments ago the sea uh, was there during the high tide so when the um, tide was there high tide was there not the low tide 
when the water was coming with a force uh, perhaps that uh, moment happened just a few minutes ago and that's why the sand is making that kind of sound we all have that kind of experience already because we have already gone through various places various beaches like Diga Puri etc I found it difficult walking in my high heels and it is very natural so the female so the wife uh, is wearing mm, you know that high heel and it was really difficult for her to walk in the sand with high heels now female uh, obviously can understand this difficulty with my heavy sari squashing damply around my ankles so this is also clear that the woman is wearing a sari with high heels perhaps it was a better fashion for her perhaps uh, it was not indicating anything grave or something really indicating serious now the sari you see when you go to the such beaches or such uh, places where the sea is very available sea is very ominous and present you will identify people with either jeans pants or short tops like that now this woman is wearing a sari it means she is perhaps from a respectable family and perhaps from a conservative family and because this is written not long ago so the concept is still um, in the mind of the writer too so if the woman is wearing a sari with high heels uh, she is justly married and they are on their honeymoon vacation perhaps or and that's why with my heavy sari squashing damply around my ankle so we can imagine that the sari is squashing damply uh, it's almost like a glue around my ankles it, it is uh, already uh, hooked or mm, creating a hindrance in walking it, it creates an irritation while walking with high heels in the sand so it was particularly her mm, problem of walking at that moment at that time of uh, at that place so i was conscious of an unreasonable pang of irritation against him see here again a sentence that is introduced peculiarly i was conscious so she was aware of an unreasonable pang of irritation against him it suggests that see i was conscious of an unreasonable pang unreasonable so there is no clear reason uh, something is not very plausible so even the female even the wife uh, is not clear about that and that's why it is unreasonable pang of irritation against him so she is irritated uh, in the situation and she's kind of um, bored or not feeling good in the presence of that male uh, because the male is not giving importance or uh, you know a special look uh, or he perhaps doesn't care about the woman at that moment and that's why the female is perhaps a bit uh, um, a bit irritated at that moment unreasonable pang of irritation against him she is having an unreasonable pang of irritation against the husband against the person as though sensing my discomfort he held my arm to help me as though sensing my discomfort discomfort is that i'm feeling not well sensing her discomfort he held my arm to help me the husband was holding the arm of the wife or the female or the narrator he is holding the arm to help her but awkwardly too tight but that hold was awkward now when that hold was awkward if the male was her husband then the hold should not be awkward if not their marriage was just a recent one they even do not know 
to each other and that is the reason why that hold has to be awkward too tight otherwise the feeling will be all right if they will be the lovers they were lovers at some point of time and they are now a married couple this will not be feeling awkward perhaps uh, they will manage it or she will manage it but she is telling it that it's an unreasonable pang of irritation against him or in, in the uh, uh, at the beginning of the second paragraph see that with pop annoyance so all of these are creating because they are not very known to each other and that's why awkwardly too tight because it was too tight the hold was too tight it was awkward to her and i wanted to protest to release my arm from his constricting grip i wanted to protest as i was talking about this liberating mind of the female now there she wanted to protest against that hold to release my arm to release her arm from his constricting grip constricting suggests holding something with pressure uh, constrict means make narrower especially by encircling pressure so if you are holding something tight that means it is constricting constricting grip means you are holding something very very tight and that's why it is called a constricting grip the sea had left innumerable shells on the shore which crunched under our feet and i bent down to pick up one so the sea had left that means uh, we also have this experience that when there is the low tide and after the high tide there were so many seashells um, on the beach we usually find and that that same thing happened here the sea had left innumerable uncountable innumerable means uncountable shells on the shore on the shore means on the seashore which crunched under or crunched is you know uh, making a sound and it is breaking uh, so the crunching sound is producing so crunched under our feet and i bent down to pick up one so i bent down to pick up one one of the uh, shell or uh, shells any excuse to loosen his hold on my arm so it was not particularly romantic to pick up the, one of the shells it was rather logical why is is that logical because any excuse to loosen his hold on my arm so she was not directly protesting that was an interesting fact maybe that he is the husband or was the husband of the i that means the female and despite there is no plain and simple relationship between them if there will be a simple relationship the wife will tell her husband about that constricting grip but she wasn't doing that at all she isn't doing that at all that is the reason why we as a reader must find the typical behavior here or the uh, curious or strange um, attitude that the female is experiencing and showing or representing so there was something uh, any excuse to loosen his hold on my arm so this was the reason why she needs to go down to pick up uh, one of the shells so that was completely logical of her but horrors there was something alive something crawling in the shell and i threw it away in disgust and hurried on after him so it was a false show it was naturally not working for her because a live shell was there and that was uh, described in that way there was something alive something crawling in the shell and i threw it away in disgust and hurried on after him so it was creating a disgust in her because that live uh, crawling something that live crawling something creates a disturbance already in her mind and that disturbance is outburst into the disgust starting with the third paragraph which starts with now thankfully we were out of the sand and back in the village but a village that looked so different it was difficult to believe it was the same so the journey is continuing from the earlier two passages we have already understood uh, that 
the couple is uh, is heading somewhere the destination is perhaps near and they are uh, probably in a seashore, seashore village where um, they have booked a hotel room and um, to that destination uh, they are heading now this will uh, be understood a few moments later however uh, let us start with the third paragraph now thankfully we were out of the sand why the word thankfully is here because in the sand the female the woman had experienced a bitter horror uh, because she picked up one of the shells and there was something alive that gave her a disgust and that is why mm, she is saying that now thankfully we were out of the sand and back in the village so uh, that traumatic experience is over that mm, completely disgusting disappointing uh, aspect is now over and they are out of that area region so we were out of the sand and back in the village so they are back again in the village but a village that looked so different it was difficult to believe it was the same so the same village probably the village is mm, the length of the village is too long and it is separated in two parts the first part which already they have mm, gone through and that part mm, they experienced the fishing uh, nets women with gold ornaments people staring at them and in this part of the village the village that looked so different why different because there was nothing similar uh, of the earlier village so it was difficult to believe it was the same so completely it was unbelievable because this part of the village is completely newer a version uh, which is not the earlier one that is why she is saying that it is different and it is difficult so uh, to believe it was the same village the paths were broader and went steeply uphill now uh, there is indeed a distinction because if we go back to the first paragraph so um, here that the beginning a little path so narrow that if we stretched our arms we could touch the houses on both sides and here in the third paragraph you will uh, understand that the paths were broader so there is indeed a, a difference between these two parts of the village so um, paths were broader and went steeply uphill so it was an upward movement uh, they are going upwards uh, so they have to struggle there were scarcely any signs of the sea naturally there was no sign of the sea scarcely is used because uh, it is not usual it is almost uh, the absence so that is the reason why scarcely is used so the absence of the sea is visible here uh, and it is noticeable too so there were scarcely any signs of the sea no fishing nets no dried fish so this is not at all a village uh, filled with people like uh, fishermen and fishing materials like fishing nets or dried fish etc so this one this version is quite a newer one and quite a fresher one so instead there was the familiar lacy foliage of the drumstick tree outlined sharply against the sky so there was the familiar lacy foliage lacy uh, foliage of the drumstick tree you can understand from this picture uh, this is the meaning of the lacy as well as foliage and the drumstick tree so outlined sharply against the sky so th those were um, outlined there and those are sharp and they are projected against the sky the drumsticks hanging imply mm, uh, limply and peacefully from the branches so the those drumsticks this drum uh, drumstick tree this is the picture of the drumstick uh, already we have understood we have uh, noticed it so the drumsticks hanging limply and peacefully from the branches limply suggests lacking internal strength or structure not stiff or firm that is the limp so hanging limply and peacefully from the branches they are almost hanging very peacefully and they have not the strength um, as it is seen uh, through their um, ways the drumsticks hanging very limply and peacefully from the branches this is the image i had no time to look around so why she had not no 
time to look around uh, why uh, she did not look around and why she did feel that she had no time it was because um, in the next sentence uh, it's clear the man loaded with our new expensive suitcases was already at the top of the hill and i had to hurry to stumble on a hill panting wishing now for the support i had earlier spawned so this is the reason the reason is very clear why she had no time to look around because the uh, way the um, because the reason uh, the man loaded with our new expensive suitcases so uh, the suitcases are expensive and they are brand new so these suggest literally they are a justly married couple who with their new expensive suitcases uh, in a vacation probably in their first honeymoon so um, these sentences or expressions or uh, words or phrases suggest that they are newly married state and, and they are going somewhere for the for their honeymoon so the man loaded with our new expensive suitcases was already at the top of the hill and i had to hurry so this is the reason that she had to hurry to reach on the you know, top of that place to her husband because her husband already was there and moreover she was stumbling on a hill so it was not a, a smooth or smoother way to walk around so if you have to go up you are uh, naturally you will stumble on the uphill so it is not uh, an easy task to walk or move on the upper area or uphill and this was a natural reaction she was panting she had to hurry she was stumbling naturally she was panting wishing now for the support i had earlier spawned so that was a kind of support that when uh, her husband stretched um, his arm to support her in the sand now she avoided that she rejected that now this is a spawn spawn suggests rejection so not uh, uh, you know accepting denial so the support earlier what her husband had uh, done for her she right now needed that support which she already spawned she already rejected earlier now moving to the next paragraph because these paragraphs are simple descriptions and in the simple descriptions we will find the simple descriptions of the happening what is uh, happening in the text so mm, moving on to the next paragraph we are almost there he said encouragingly and yes we had left all the huts behind us now we are almost there he said encouragingly why encouragingly because this encouragement comes uh, due to the reason that they have finally reached to their destination so the destination is going to end and that is the reason why uh, the man said in encouraging voice we are almost there and yes we had left all the huts behind us and naturally the village uh, they have already left the village so the huts of the village they have also left and uh, they are almost at their destination we went up a steep rock path lined by big boulders and suddenly we were at the top went up a steep rock path uh, this is understandable steep uh, in the sense rising sharply almost perpendicular so this is steep rock path we can understand that the way the path is rocky because it is a hill area and the kind of mixture between uh, hill and ocean and this you will find a similarity with the bhaizag if you have already visited bhaizag so you will have this idea that how uh, bhaizag is giving the uh, visitors the charm uh, of the city so vishakhapatnam is a good example of that so to visit to the vizag uh, in order to get this feeling however mm, we went up a steep rock path lined by big boulders so big boulders are lining uh, these big boulders you can find also in digha 
and suddenly we were at the top so we were at the top of the place so from there we can see everything uh, that was the destination a square squat building stared at us blankly now here uh, it is evident that building is personified but this is not important uh, due to that sheer romantic ideas romanticism the female is always describing um, things in a deeper way in an uh, exuberant way so that is the reason why the building has been personified in her speech and the description of that building is like a square squat building squat we understand uh, because this is a yoga position um, everyone uh, already have seen has an idea at least what is the position of a squat so a square squat building stared at us blankly as if the building is staring at them blankly because this uh, building has nothing extraordinary to share or perhaps mm, this is not encouraging at all for the building too and that is the personified aspect so the building is here personified as a human being uh, who is staring at them them means the husband and wife the male and the female who just reached at the spot so square squat building stared at us blankly my hair blew anyhow and my sari began billowing into odd ugly shapes my hair blew anyhow means uh, there, there was a lot of air so uh, due to that air the hair was disheveled not in that proper shape and my sari began billowing into odd billowing suggests below suggests uh, generally a large undulating mass of something a uh, typically cloud smoke or steam that is called below so here belowing odd it's it suggests belowing uh, works as an adjective uh, like a you know below the out around her uh, fill with air and swell outwards so as if it is swelling outside belowing mm, means swelling it is coming outside so protruding uh, it suggests this so billowing into odd means um, the sari was also in not in proper shape and that is the reason why she is saying that they are in ugly shapes so the sari was in ugly shapes not in the proper shape due to the air and that um, uh, walking in that rocky uh, path uphill uh, way so they uh, they means the female has to stumble uh, and it was not an easy ride so naturally her sari was not in proper shape now it was comfortable for uh, jeans and top or something like that but it was kind of uh, tough to maintain sari in the hill area and that is the reason why people are wearing usually jeans top even the females uh, were available with these kind of outfits so naturally it was like that someone came forward to receive us and open one of the rooms for us so someone from the um, uh, hotel authority someone from the uh, hotel uh, maybe the manager maybe the hotel boy maybe someone who came forward to receive us uh, to receive them and opened one of the rooms for us so maybe the he was the hotel boy so opened one of the room for them I sank gratefully into a chair once they entered into that room the female the wife sank gratefully into a chair why gratefully because uh, she just needed that and that, and all of a sudden she had this opportunity to sit on a chair and that is the reason why she sank gratefully into a chair easing my tired feet out of my slippers so uh, she is just giving her uh, slippers out of her feet in order to have a peace in order to have a rest of her tired feet why tired feet it's because um, actually this is a transfer epithet tired feet tired suggests she is tired not her feet uh, so the adjective tired is applying here against feet not to that female so that is the reason why it's called a transfer epithet now in that transfer epithet uh, it suggests the narrator perhaps suggests that she is tired and her feet uh, is also tired why it's because of the walk is because of the long uh, unstable walk and in a rocky way uh, not in the smoother way and that is the reason why her feet uh, was tired
So easing my tired feet out of my slippers, too exhausted even to look around. Even uh, you know, she, even if she had this idea or she has the idea to look around uh, to see through that new places uh, where she is now and w about the destination. So she had this uh, little idea to look around, but her tiredness, uh, exhausting uh, sensibilities, exhausting physique, the fatigue make uh, her tired, extremely tired, extremely exhausted. So naturally she hadn't the encouragement or the courage left to look around. That is the reason why she's saying that too exhausted even to look around. Isn't this nice? He asked me, beaming, pleased with himself. Uh, so the husband, this is the first speech, in fact, the first um, stable speech we are having here, that the husband, that the male is asking the female, the wife, isn't this nice? So he's asking about the place, that isn't that place nice? Uh, me beaming, beaming as if, you know, uh, overwhelming in a sense, that are coming out, that's beaming, pleased with himself. Why pleased? Because... Uh, it was a self boast boasting that the husband thought that he selected a very good place for staying and because of that self assurance and as well as self assessment uh, he thought this is the best place or this was the best place now i'm requesting you not to ponder over in the speech or in the narration about the past and present tense because sometimes it will be past sometimes it will be present in tense so there is no issue about that only thing that you need to get the idea always try to think about the concept the concept that i'm trying to give the explanation that i'm trying to make now here again uh, pleased with himself all signs of nervousness and irritation gone now that we had arrived so all signs of nervousness the nervousness and irritation that the female was uh, continuously struggling with gone now that we had arrived so finally they have arrived to their destination and therefore once the journey is ended once the journey is finished uh, they have this um, the whole uh, fatigue system is com uh, comes to an end that is the reason why the nervousness and irritation gone yes i said so yes was the answer to this question isn't this nice so the female said yes and it was a very precise pithy short answer and nothing else was said so even from this we have this idea that their conjugal relationship starts not very nice uh, if it will be there will be good amount of conversation between them but the questions asked by the husband and the answers given by the wife are not very adequate so from these reasons these signs we can understand as a reader uh, they are married life are not for a longer period of time they are not having their conjugal relationship for a longer period of time they are uh, recently married now more we will understand more we will read about the text it had the usual dullness coming to the next paragraph now starting this paragraph it had the usual dullness and impersonality of any room where people stay for a short time and go away now uh, how could it be possible that a room had the usual dullness and impersonality? What does this signify? This signifies that a room is uh, usually dull when we find the similar kind of structures of a room. Now think about it. When we go, when we visit to these uh, reputed spots like Digapuri, Darjeeling, Gangtok, Sikkim, etc. Whatever it may be. We find the similar kind of structures uh, of the hotel rooms and we know the hotel rooms will be like that so this is the usual dullness you will not find anything interesting in the room you will not find anything mind soothing in the room and you know very well that you are just going to stay in that room or in those rooms for one or two days or maximum four days and after that you have to leave 
So that is the reason why these rooms are usually dull and they are impersonal. Uh, why? Because you do not think those rooms as of your own as you have in your own home. That is the reason why this usual dullness and impersonality of any room where people stay for a short time and go away. This is very natural, leaving no impress of themselves behind. So they, these people who usually stay in those rooms, they do not care about the rooms at all. They just stay and leave. That is the simple system and that's why they do not leave no impress uh, of themselves behind. Just a jumble of stale smells and this happens very regularly. This is very natural when a room is completely shut down, uh, completely you know, shut, all the windows are shut and the doors are shut the, in that four claustrophobic wall, you will find only the stale smells because you are coming from the outside, uh, you know, getting the fresh air coming inside where uh, the fresh air is not available. So what remains? Only the stale smells. Even I sniffed surreptitiously a smell of bed bugs. Now, even this is one step further, the female, the wife, smells surreptitiously. Snip suggests that, you know, uh, taking a deep breath, taking the air through the nostrils in order to get the smell. Surreptitiously means clandestinely or secretly. A smell of bed bugs. Bed bug is a kind of bug, a blood sucking bug, usually found uh, in among the, you know, in the body of an, mammals. So she snipped surreptitiously, smell of bed bugs. The man flung open the windows and the breeze rushed in at us. So this was exactly what a man should do. The husband flung open all the windows. Windows means all of the windows of the room. And the breeze rushed in at us. Natural. Because the outside breeze will come inside. And once that breeze will come inside, it will destroy, that breeze will destroy at one stroke all the smells. All the smells means all the stale smells. So that was very natural. Do you want anything? He asked. Now it was also a very kind asking of a husband to his wife. So, Do you uh, really need you? Uh, do you re need anything? Mm, or she uh, really needs anything? So that was his part of asking that literally if she needs anything so he will uh, get that now yes some tea is that all right now this is also very natural reaction because we think about us when we visit in a, a room hotel room we, we stay there somewhere the first thing that we do usually asking for tea I am leaving the tea lovers who are always uh, you know asking for tea leave them think about yourself if you are not a tea lover or regular you know the gobbling gallons of teas if you are not that even if you or I people like us will do the same the female does the same the wife did the same so yes some tea is that all right now I stop here why uh, let me explain this to you the story is quite a long one. Naturally, the story has to be in parts. And I have decided to break it in almost three parts. And this is the first part. Uh, I'm stopping here and uh, up to this uh, may be counted as the first part. Why? And uh, let me tell you that I have decided to uh, make it uh, at least three parts. Because the more I will break uh, okay, there are possibilities that I can create 10 parts, but you will not get that enthusiasm to listen throughout uh, my bogus lectures later on. So naturally, I have to keep it short, or at least shorter. So I have decided to make it uh, or break it th into three parts. Now, why I stop here is in the first part, because from here I nodded the man went out. From here, you need to understand the story in a better way. Because from there on, you will have to understand the psychological insight into a character. Their conversation will give you better insight into them. Moreover, sometimes you will find the stream of consciousness throughout the description, throughout the narration. So up to this, till the point that we have read, 
up to this you will get a general notion general idea that yes they have finally reached to their destination so now something is coming some psychologically improved ideas are coming and we all have to understand very strictly about those if not the story will be destroyed the flavor of the story you will not understand you will miss the flavor that is the reason why i stop here because from the next part which starts i nodded that the man went out from there we will try to understand the story in a different way we will try to get the version in a different way so very soon we are going to start that so up to this I stop here as in the first part and as I said always that if you face any problem just ask me I will try my best to help you again